something went on here, something went on there. And this time on TNT. Okay, guys, if you like Popular Girl, you're going to love Popular Boy, Manada. And we also play the classic. Plus, all the details on our brand new tour dates. It's all coming up right now on TNT. Okay, girls, the only girls, c'est moi, Commander Donnie, ici. C'est le Touring Show Manada. Ce soir, moi puis ma femme, Twix. Bonjour, Twix. How you doing? We're in Saskatoon to see some exciting man dance action. Hey, girls, how you doing? Are you excited? Can't wait. Première sur le stage, our first performers. Okay, girls, let's hear it for Tom Cochrane. Oh, look at him go! Look at those abs, girl. Hey, he's quite Woo! a flirt, ladies. You can look, but you cannot touch, okay? Oh, look who else. We got another guy coming up here, ladies. It's Mike Babscock. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I see where he get his names. Thanks for coming to Popular Boy in Saskatoon. It's the touring show, Manada. Okay, girls, the only girls, you play no lounge, pas les loonies, play toonies ce soir. Hey, Twix, who have you got on the stage next? Hey, ladies, we got your favorite right now. It's the one and only Gary Garters. <laughs> Oh, but he's not all by himself. He a part tout seul. Uh, c'est aussi sur le stage, girls. Make some noise for Prick Moranis. <laughs> the Pet Shop Boys. <laughs> wow! Look at that guy's abs. Absolument, Twix. It's popular, boy. Man of that touring show with my commander Donnie puis my fam Twix. Saskatoon, tu veux mettre some noise? Prochain sur le stage, next on the stage, girls. Okay, girls, the only girls, c'est David Fister. Look at the legs on him. Holy moly, they're like tree trunks. I'm so uncomfortable. Oh my god, With hey! All of this. Guess who else is coming on the stage? It's Ike Duffy! Ike Duffy a beaucoup de moves sur the stage, ladies. Let's hear it for Mike Duffy's. Touchez pas le marchandise, don't touch the merchandise. And don't okay, forget. girls, c'est le temps pour votre feature dancer sur Manada. Prochain sur the stage, next on the stage, Nad Roberts. Oh my goodness, what a... Look at the locks of hair! Mm-mm-mm-mm, ladies, the Nad Robert Silvestage. Oh, we have another guy coming up. It's one of our favorites, a local. It's Lloyd Robertson. Oh, that's news to me, girls. Je sais pas, uh, ok girls, et uh, quelques gars, a uh, couple of guys here too. Prochain sur le stage is a local hometown boy from the province next door. Uh, C'est Chode Kroger's. <laughs> what song is this? <clears throat> hey girls! Say hi to Mr. Mr. Shiny! It's Al Waxed Man! <laughs> Look at the lights just coming off him. He's glistening. Uh, girls, all that glitter is not gold. Uh. Oh, we've got one more coming up on the stage. It's Ben Throw Toonies. Mais <laughs> Ben n'est pas par tout seul non plus. He's not by himself aussi. Uh, your feature dancer girls make some noise pool. Let's hear it for the crooner, Michael Publay. <laughs> what is that song? It's just about to start. We're gonna get into it. But here comes our favorite. 
It's Meltem John! What is the song? Is it Ring My Bell? Yeah! <laughs> Man, why is there 70 bars of phew <laughs> vamping? Imagine playing Hit the Post with this! I love the idea of a touring male review. There is the thunder from down under. Why wouldn't there be Manada? <coughs> Manada might be the funniest thing ever. <laughs> well, it occurred to us, we've done a lot of Popular Girl, but we've never done Popular Boy. Yeah. And you had the idea of making it a touring review. Yes. With, I with mean, our, 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 our bod DJ from Popular Girl, who's only getting paid to be a DJ, he decides to branch out and try and take it across the country with Manada. I like that he's a big dreamer. He is. And I've spent so much time in Quebec this week. I was at, um, that's why it, uh, the accent comes easy. I was in um, Laurierville, Quebec, Ooh. where the Global Strategic Maple Syrup Reserve exists. 165,000 barrels with a street value of $240 million. That's, uh, that's liquid gold right there. It is liquid gold, and it's actually valued higher per barrel than oil. That's crazy. One of those standard like metal barrels that you might have a fire in. Yeah. It's like two grand worth of syrup. Well, that's a lot of syrup. Is it, can you get one of those at Costco or something? I don't think so, but um, there are only 60 authorized sellers in Quebec. He, here's syrup by the stats, because this, this is pretty solid Canadianity. Yeah. Quebec is responsible for 92% <laughs> of Canada's maple syrup. Wow. Quebec is responsible for 70 percent of the world's maple syrup insanity there are over 7500 maple syrup producers in the province of quebec that's, that's pretty a, bananas yeah so there's probably generations of families that have been doing it just crushing the the, the uh old crushing school. the syrup game yeah and well i was asking this woman caroline who is showing us around um and she is fourth generation syrup worker Ooh. And she said they don't tap trees so much anymore. It's mostly done on a tubing system. Yeah. But this is really smart. Here's what the maple syrup producers of Canada did. First of all, we ran out in 2008, and that's why we need a global maple syrup reserve. Mm -hmm. Secondly, syrup producers got together and voted on the idea of the central syrup facility. So let's all take our syrup here. It'll be pasteurized. It'll be tasted. And it'll be graded on color. And the thing that's rare from a farmer's perspective is you actually know, because the price is set, how much you're going to make any given season kind of before you produce. Yeah, There's no like, you know, sometimes in barrels. typical agricultural farmer farming, you, you might grow potatoes and then the market crashes and you don't end up getting much for them or something. And isn't it true that uh, trees can have like a, a bigger yield or a less depending on the year? Like wow, that's one question I didn't ask, but I did ask her if... I think they do. They like, do change. trees have, um, like, people kind of most productive years, or, like, do trees ever retire? And she's like, no, as long as they're <laughs> upright, you can tap them. And some of the bigger ones have, like, three or four taps on them. That sounds like something Crunch, Crunch, Crunch guy would say. If they're upright, you can tap them. Crunch, <laughs> Crunch, Crunch. Yeah, he's still up for being tapped. Um, uh, and then on the same trip, I went to visit a guy named Tony de Provence, ooh. who is the uh, one of the big Quebec trailer magnets. Mm -hmm. And it was really inspiring as uh, an up and coming trailer person to go see this guy's empire. He's really built it up from nothing. It's quite impressive. Is it a, what a national RV deal? No, he trailers? does. Um, he does the same thing that I do, just on a much bigger scale. He rents trailers to films and TV shows in Quebec. Oh wow! But where I have like a few things, he has like several dozen things. Mm -hmm. It's really cool. He takes you to the hangar, and he goes. He's like, check this out. And there's like some special trailer that, like, what is it? Like some old steamer, or whatever they call them. Well, just to give you some insight into the yank that Tony de Provence has in the world, he tells the trailer company how he wants the trailers built, and they do it how he wants. Wow. It's not like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy that from you guys. It's here. Make me this. And they do. And like these trailers nowadays that can cost like 300 grand, right, to make one. Oh, yeah. They're insane. I, I mean, the ones that uh, that I deal in aren't, aren't that kind of dough. Mm-hmm. But the thing that was cool about Tony de Provence, there were many things, but 
The thing that was cool in the big picture was, I am a guy he doesn't know, he barely speaks a word of English, and he was very generous with his time and with his information. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I really appreciated about him is he said, and it's so true, why would I see you as competition if we could find a way to work together? If you eat, I eat, everybody's eating, isn't that the point? That's good. I was like, man, I love that. Man, where's that action right there? I know, because Tony de Provence has a couple of competitors in Montreal, but he works with them all the time. Couple competitors, like what? the uh, it's like the music game with the promoters. Yeah, exactly. Like Donald K. Donald, the big chief. Yeah, but he's doing really a nice. movie with um big celebrities right now, and there are other movies going on in town, and he's okay that he didn't get them, and he lends things to the other guy, and vice versa. It's the way it should be, bud. Didn't you spend a little time in Montreal, too? I was at the airport, bud. Airport hotel, bud. Just that's it? One quick rip in Montreal for the night? Yeah, I I literally landed and drove right to the Global Maple Syrup Reserve, Uh, got back to the hotel in time to crash, and then uh, left early the next morning. Well, no, went to see Tony de Provence, and then flew back. How far a drive was it to the uh, maple syrup joint? Two bills. Do they have like a mass acreage there or is it just they take it from all over Quebec and it's shipped there? Well, they take it from all over Quebec. It is an otherwise <laughs> unassuming building in a tiny village, but it has some chain link and it has high security because you might have read in the year, I think it was 2013, some grease balls, not from this facility because you couldn't pull it off but from another off-site storage facility they had, some grease balls were skimming the maple syrup and topping it up with lake water. Whoa. How greasy is that maneuver? That's more greasy than the kid at the uh, on the weekend doing it to the, the booze bottles. Oh, I know. We did that all the time. Did you? Yeah, with friends, friends' parents, with the big, heavy liquor cabinets. <laughs> it's like dark rum and it's all light. We called it moose piss. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Tiger, what, what's new with you folks? The moose piss was what the uh, parents had to drink after. You guys got the good stuff. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, what's new in Taggart land? Well, you know, we're just getting ready for summertime. Soccer, swimming lessons, all that fun stuff. I saw a picture got, of an exciting <clears throat> new purchase in your family. What? the? Uh, we're getting a trampoline. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. I was talking about the water-bound one. What's that? The little uh, paddle boat? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's just we were got up. Actually, was nice. Uh, uh, some neighbors that moved to the other side of the lake just said, "Hey, do you want to keep this here?" Yes, we and do. We're like, yeah, no problem. So now we can cruise around in a little four-seater with the paddle boats, or the the old cycle styles. Paddle boats are big fun. They are. Especially on this little lake. It's fun. <clears throat> so is your lake a no motor boat kind of lake? Yeah, you can't have a boat over a motor over 12 uh, miles an hour, kilometers an hour. Right. It has to be small for just for fishing. There's like trout and bass. There's a bass farm in there. So it's sensitive areas as well. It's good times. Do you ever fish? I did. I've fished here a couple times. Catch something, bud? I caught uh, a bunch of uh, sunfish, and uh, then I caught one trout, and I was like, couldn't believe the fight, the difference of the fight, because I'm not a big fishing guy, but the trout had like 10 times the strength of the sunfish, and it was the same size. Very impressed. Go fig, Newton. How about that, eh? I took up fishing last, I think it was last summer, kind of in earnest, Mm -hmm. and was going to get the girls into it and stuff, because I like the idea of fishing. It seems so peaceful. Yeah. But then I caught a couple of fish, and which I know is the point, and there were just a couple of moments in front of the girls where it's like, oh, the, why is the hook in the fish's eye socket? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, creeps Oh, well, me because, out. um, because. Yeah. Isn't it going to be blind? That's just a bad a catch. Bad. That's an unlucky catch for the fish. I'll say. Yeah, I, I uh, throw them back. I don't, I've never eaten them, but, uh, I've I don't think I've got one in the eyeball yet, but I don't fish. Like I said, I don't fish much. My Actually, my kids all f- caught a fish last year in Muskoka for the first time. Did they animals. dig it? Just one of those little kid kid uh, rods, and it's like you throw it in, and they just jump on it. 
Um, it's really exciting. I remember as a kid, like jigging mackerel. We had a, a cabin cruiser and um, like school of mackerel would go under like that deep, deep water in PEI where you can still see the sandy bottom. Mm -hmm. You just see a whole silvery school of mackerel go by and you just dip your hook down and jig them up, bud. Just get them? Yep. Just get them. It was back in the day, though, of course. Back in the day when you just like are up there and you just got them on the frying pan with a little salt and pepper. Yep. Well, I remember one night our house was like a fish market because we got a few um, garbage bags full of mackerel and a couple laundry baskets full. Those scaly masks, people dropping by, couldn't give it all away. It was a different (laughs) time. I remember fishing for lobsters once. That's a, that was kind of cool in Costa Rica. How do they do that? You got to walk around and walk, look for. You have to go like at uh, dusk so you can see their eyes under the water. You see little light. Their eyes are they 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 light up. What? Of, you can see their eyes and like from the. Whatever light there is, there's some glow in action with their eyes. No. They don't have claws. They're just spiky. Like, they don't have the big claws like uh, your lobsters up in the, in, in the Atlantic. They're spiky, and all it is is, like, the tail, basically. Is the meat so kind of similar? <clears throat> huh? Is Does the meat taste the same? Yeah, no, definitely. But they're really spiky, and when we went, it was with some locals that did it all the time. And they were, like, fucking with me the whole time. Like, they had gloves on, but I didn't have a glove. And they would pick one up and grab it and throw it at me and, and, like, tell me to hold on to it. And it was, like, super painful and spiky, right, without the gloves. Thinking it was hilarious. Yeah, and then they'd, like, pass it back to me and they'd start laughing, but they had the gloves on. F- fucking jerks. But what um, we used to, at my cottage, we uh, dug for clams and stuff and would have uh, clam boils on mm. the south shore of PEI. Um, but we also would look for crabs because sometimes they would have in their little V uh, thing on their chest that you can open. Yeah. Sometimes they had dimes and stuff in them because they're attracted to shiny things. Ooh. So if there was change on the bottom of the ocean, they the maps would pick <laughs> it up and kind of store it. <laughs> Checking fish for quarters. Yeah, 10 cents is a lot of money for a crab, bud. <clears throat> crabsies? Yeah. <laughs> Did you crush them, too? I ca- called crabsies. Sorry, bud, crabsies. I'm going to take that from you. Did you crush them? I'm not really feeling crab. Don't, don't you have to... Yeah, you, you got to boil them up and then... <clears throat> I, I, don't, I don't know if I've crushed a lot of crabs, either. I've I'm not into lobster. crab. It's not a lot of meat on those little crabs. No, they're a lot of work. Although I do like lobster kind of legs. Kind bummer for them. <clears throat> it's like frogs. they got to die just for their leggies. Not really feeling that either. <laughs> no, me neither. Not really feeling scallops either, although McKelvey's in Halifax does them wrapped in bacon and drizzled with maple syrup. I'm oh. good to pound a few of those. <laughs> That's like just like the guy who holds his nose and drinks the vodka version of scallops. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like them except for the scallopy flavor. Yeah. Hey, we should share with the people, something happened by accident last time. You recorded on your phone without your mic. Yeah. And you thought it sounded pretty great. Mm Mm-hmm. So you told me to download iRig, which I did. And now you're rolling on the same technology. I know, but I I guess we'll see. This is all so new and exciting. I'll send it (laughs) to Timbo. If it sounds all shitty, then it's all my fault. (laughs) Do I send it as a wave thing or as an MP3? Uh, the top one. This is just the smaller one. Let's and that see. sounds fine. Yeah. Well, why did I buy a damn mic? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see how this works. And then why did I buy another one? Another, oh, yeah, you bought two. And, and then, then why the egg, did I buy $75 worth of egg carton foam <laughs> to put in my basement closet <laughs> where we kept building materials? And I'm on the kitchen out in the open. <laughs> Can you imagine if all of a sudden I sound like... Hi, how's it going? All of a sudden, like Donovan, for real? James <clears throat> Earl Jones up in his math. <laughs> James Earl Johnny. It um, It's summer, bud. It's yeah. finally summer. I'm pretty uh, fired up for the warmth. And it was cold last night, but it's warm today. Like, today feels like it's legit. It's like 25. That's perfect. Sick. And the bugs aren't kicking, but they're really getting fired up at 6 o'clock. 
I want to talk that, about, I, I think it's <clears throat> kind of gross, but I feel like I should share this photo. I found a couple of different, uh, three different piles of feces in my lawn. Whoa. And I don't know what kind of animal it is. And I know there's some bot out there who will be like, oh, it's a skunk. You can tell by how it's strung together. Is it, is it big? Well, it is um, big by, it's not pellets like a, like a Goat. deer would be. Or a rabbit. Oh, well, see, I don't really know what rabbit feces looks like. Yeah, they got the they got the little balls that go together, little ballies. Okay, is that what this they are? is? Um, shiny, and <laughs> I would say there's um, they're probably the size of a walnut, and there's like three to four of them. <laughs> you look, and there's like a big, a half eat half eaten thing of shoe polish, and that's why it's all shiny. Yeah, <laughs> and a donair. Don't airs. Hey, let's take a break. It's my first time uh, hitting the pause button on this new technology. And then if it worked, we'll Hit be right back. Hit the button. Okay. Now? Yeah, let's buy. Crap. Would you like some egg and beans? Fuck off! You're not my mom! Welcome back, buds. It's time to play the old classic. Get a job. <laughs> Our favorite game. It's so dumb, and it doesn't even make sense, but a bud actually requested that we play Get a Job again. Yeah. Remind me how it goes. It's it's job interview scenarios, right? Yes, or yes. scenarios. Scenarios. Yeah. Job interview scenarios. And then we're just a couple of drummers who, like, improv different people in different job interview settings. A couple of drummers just riffing, yeah. Just a couple of drummers riffing. All right. Okay. Um. So... Uh, who is going to be first? Um, I'll be the interviewer, and you be the fat burger. Fat, okay. Is it, is it, is fat burger, is it like a, you're not sure the gender of fat burger person? Of my person? The fat burger person, I yeah. guess I always imagined she was a gal, because oh, in a, real life she was. It's a girl? Yeah. Oh, Okay. Yeah, so you're the manager of Fat Bur- Burger, <clears throat> and I am uh, I am the Fat Burger lady coming in for her first job interview. This is how they met. Okay, perfect. So do we tee it up by saying it's time to play, or we just get right into it? <clears throat> well, we can say it. Yeah, do you want to say it? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's time to play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hello? Hi, how are you? Okay, I'm here. Uh, are you here for the job? I uh, sure hope so. Uh, so you have any previous experience working in a uh, burger place or a restaurant at all? No. Pardon? No. Pardon? No. So you mean you don't? Or you do? No, it's a come down to no. Okay, can, Let's uh, let's just go through some steps here. Uh, how would you uh, say I'd like two cheeseburgers and a Coke? Two cheeseburgers and a Coke! Okay. A large Coke or a small Coke? All right. Uh, large what? Coke or small Coke? Yeah, that's a little bit... Uh, can, why don't you... Uh, a large co- Coke! Come over here to the grill. Okay. Sh- show me how you uh, you make a burger. Yeah, put it on. And then you flip, you get the bread, oh, toast it up, what? put on some mustard oh and ketchup, God. put a oh chest, oh, and your bread. Hold! I've never seen such mastery. <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> hey, you got the job. I got a job. Yes. Got a job. I, I need you here. When can I start? Tonight. Is the first thing I do. I get a fitting for a uniform. <laughs> Yes, whatever you want. Hey, one more question. What? What is it pay? <laughs> Pays uh twelve forty five. Where do I say? Uh, you don't have to sign. I do the signing of your checks. Do I get paid in cash? <laughs> no. Do I get a discount on fur? <laughs> oh man, it sounds like a horn, <laughs> like a trumpet in the throat. Germatherm. 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 <laughs> okay, you ready? Yeah. So the next one, 
Yeah, it's time to play. Get a job. <laughs> oh, so dumb. Yeah. All right, what scenario is this one? Uh. Oh, I know what we should do. Let's do a couple dudes in a music store. All and right. the guy who comes in for the job is trying to prove how much he knows. Okay. So do you want to you... be the guy that comes in or the guy working there? Uh, I'll, I guess I'll be the, the guy looking for the job. Okay, and it's Long and McQuaid. It's Long and McQuaid? Yeah. And in the, we're... what do you want to do, the woodwind section? <laughs> really? Sure. Okay. All right, it's general sales, so you can ask about anything you want. And that's what we have to do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm I'm here for the for the for the job in this uh, the woodwind section. Right on. You yeah. must be Trent, are you? Trent, yeah, that's me. What's yeah, your you name, paged sir? me earlier, bro. Great What's... to meet you. My name's Scott, but you can call me Scooter. Everyone does. Okay, Scooter, I like that. It's a cool name. Right Thanks, on. bud. Yeah. So listen, are you? Uh, most people that work here are musicians. I kind of have side projects and stuff. I play in uh, four bands. Yeah. Uh, two kind of progressive. Prog rock kind of things. I play in a jazz thing on Sunday afternoons, yeah. and then I play in uh, um, kind of a um, how would I describe it? Like light rock with gusts but up like, to adult like, contemporary like, cover band. Hang on, on like, but I that's awesome. Like, so what about the like the job here? Is I play uh, um, guitar, but I also play bass, and, and I recently started playing just for fun. I started playing um, drums and hey, bagpipes. Man. I get it. I like that. That's awesome. Like, I guess sounds... one of the things that people like about it is that I can pretty much fix anything. I can pretty much play anything. So, like anything I pick up, I can kind of play it. How much does the job pay? Well, when I started here, dude, I was playing in two bands, oh, and it was fuck, 15 years guy. ago that I started here. I can't even believe it. Time flies oh, by man. so much. That's the guy. That's the guy. I remember being in, a, in many a music store and seeing that guy. You're trying to buy something, and he starts talking about his band. I remember I was with my friend Greg Keplinger from Seattle, who's a, a legend, and uh, he was. Uh, we were at like Long McQuaid somewhere, and the, it was the classic situation where it was the guy behind the, the counter was playing his band on the PA or in the in no the, in the store because he knew he was there or just by fluke. Just no, he was just playing it anyway. Like he was just like playing his band he probably does it all the time but like <laughs> greg's to sit standing there and he and he's like is this you guys and the guy goes yeah and he goes you need to quantize this shit no <laughs> yeah. what does that even mean <laughs> it's like 60 year old speak for like get it all in time it's all no. out of time. yeah <laughs> what did Greg say? Huh? What did Greg say? That's what he said. Greg said that. Oh, that was to him. I thought you yeah, meant the no, guy working Greg there said, said it to him. him. He's like, you gotta quantize this shit. I love nerd <laughs> music stuff. Oh man, yeah. They just like get... how many Micahs have you met working in music stores? Hey, are you Jeremy Taggart? Yeah. Yeah, and you know how I like talking about gear. Yeah. You're such a gearhead. <laughs> are are most are most guys gearheads? I, I mean, I, I I I'm a gearhead in terms of I know what it is and and I'm like I know all the stuff about it and I know all the different kinds of companies of and stuff to make it, but I don't like want to talk about it. Maybe I did went from like you know fourteen to twenty. Yeah, but then you just kind of don't care about it at all like you, you know i when you're a kid you i used to love picking up drum magazines and now it's like it's the last thing i want to read even though like I, I like the drummers in it and stuff but i just when you were a kid you're reading it for like all the tips and all the stuff that you think is gonna help you out and kind of does but is mostly just propaganda to pr perpetuate the uh, sales of the magazine <clears throat> is that what i need i should be buying drum magazines no don't don't bother just listen to good records you, you well anyway. i think i can't remember if it was you that told me someone did that there's a whole stream of songs on youtube without the drum tracks in it oh that's a big thing now youtube drumming that's been so helpful oh yeah yeah 
Nice. So you just line her up. What's your favorite jams? Well, I think my I think my beats are okay. I think it's I mean it's the plight of us drummers, man. It's hard to keep time, right? Yeah. I I'm surprised you. at how uh, easily I can slip behind, or more often than not, be ahead. Yeah. Like when you do a fill or something. Yeah. You're like, oh, I lost it. Yeah. Get her back again, bud. Yeah, but it, my, my Sowing the Seeds of Love by Tears for Fears is coming together. You'll be happy to know. It's time to play. Get a job. <laughs> I think I got it right here. Okay. There it is. I love that line. Oh, I bet Hornsby gets lit up when he goes into piano shops. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. You want to take a look at this Steinway I got over here? See the keys? Full on. White <laughs> as hell. <laughs> I love the small town music shops, though, man. Cause oh, yeah, for sure. They love it. They got, like, two sets of drumsticks and a dusty old guitar on the wall. Yeah, and they're in, like, I'm in a Yes cover band, like the Maths. Yeah. Those places are few and far between now, though, man. It's like I know, but it's, it's the same as, like, old-timey, privately-owned bookstores. Yeah. More people than ever are listening to music, yet there are no record stores. We live in a property, guys. Universe, bud. And it's Fred's is still in Newfoundland, which is awesome. Difference between a record store and a music store, though. Do you get your socks at Amazon yet? No. That's a big thing. What do you mean? I guess once people get into shopping on Amazon, they're just like, that's it. That's life. And that's happening a lot, in Amer more in America than Canada. What do you even mean? They just order everything through Amazon. Like, which, send me which, socks? And, like, it, I understand there's no store and everything, but, like, the, the amount of trucks on the road and planes in the air for this shit. Um, my wife received a pair of pants from <laughs> some company last week that w they were not pants that she ordered. Really? Yeah, she got someone else's pants. And the return address on it, or the whatever, the invoice, was for a woman in Winnipeg. Wow. They're so selling so many pants, things are starting to get backed up. Did she let her know, say, hey, you got my pants, I think? Yes, my wife is such a, a sweet human mm -hmm. that she um, called the retailer and said, I got someone else's pants. And they were like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Would you mind sending them back to us? These are um, my pants. So she did. These are little... Remember, um, <coughs> Lisa, I don't even know why I'm talking about this, but, you know, Nielsen had, like, smaller... They tried to make, I think it was like three liters in the bags instead of four liters for three, or you know what I mean? Like they, they, less milk. They tried to jip you on the milk? Yeah, so then all of a sudden like the milk bags like almost even with the top because they're smaller. So she called them up and was like, what the hell's going on? I don't like this. And they just like sent a free milk and then like a free holder for the milk saying this one might work for you. And then within, I think, three months, they went back to the old size. Come on. I guess people were just complaining, like, what are you trying to do? Make it less milk for the same price. There are people that, like, don't make a living of it. But really, um, if if you write a letter to a retailer, there's a yeah. good chance they're going to do something for you. No, for sure. And some people pride themselves on like, yeah, I got 12 bottles of ketchup. I got, so, you know. No, I know. And they and it's interesting because they kept sending like every couple months after that, like coupons for free milk. Just randomly. How much milk do you maths drink? Kids with kids, man. Yeah. It's got to be a bag, three, a bag of three every day almost or a day and a half. Why are you guys bagging it? We bag it. What do you mean? Do they bag it in Ontario. Do you have you, the the cartons out where you are? You can't get a carton of milk? You can, but it's like, what's the point when it's only two liters? You know, get six cartons of milk and stack them in the fridge? Wait a sec. What? A bag has how much milk? One liter in a bag. Yeah, so, so you get a three carton of twice that. liters in a bag. Or, or more, I don't know. Don't talk to me about... Uh, I see, you get a bag with three... Yeah bags of i see yeah so, so how do you more. pinch the tip huh how do you pinch the tip to well, cut, you it, cut off? it you 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 have scissors for that and you don't bite it off that's greasy as fuck 
Yeah, so you don't have a bag trimmer. Like I remember looking in the fridge <laughs> one time when I was a kid, and it's oh, all you like can chocolate, tell. big chew on the corner. Of the you can bag. tell when you have rat milk. So you don't have bags of milk out there? You like the stits? No, I think there are bags, but we're mostly carton folks here. Yeah. And I, um, I like expensive. to burn my papers. Isn't milk expensive out east? Or no? I don't think it's much more than you people. Four for bucks? It. Five it's bucks? Around that. Sometimes eight bucks. They got the organic shit. Um, we, yeah, I mean, sometimes if you have to go to the Irving, grab some taquitos, and they, they have like two, get two two liter deals for 630 or something. Yeah. It's a good deal. It's a good deal. This is the hot tip, though. We're talking about milk on TNT. I know. Carol has turned me on to shoppers as a grocery destination, though. Really? I'm going to tell you something. Butter is cheaper at shoppers. Is it? Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, you got to keep your eye out for everything at all times. Starbucks coffee is cheaper. Cereal is often cheaper. I couldn't believe it. I was there to get um, uh, I was there to get a job, and I was there to get uh, Kraft peanut butter, like a big mm-hmm. thing. Kraft peanut butter, half the price that it is at your Sobeys. At Shoppers your... is the move for most grocery items, bot. Oh, I can't. I'm, I'm starting to get so good at it. Okay, who is uh, who's our next pairing? Uh, let's do our favorite, Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'll be trying to get a job. What? I'll be I'll be a kid, and wanting to cut her grass. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yep. So it's time to play. Oh, hold on. Say it again. It's time to play. It is time to play. Get a job. <laughs> This is the most oh, poorly conceived the door for game in history. Are okay, you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who's, uh, who's, and who's this? Hi. Yeah, uh, what's, uh, your, what's your name, little girl? Uh, I'm a boy, actually. My name's, uh, <clears throat> my name's Lyndon. Bit of a joker, Linda. <laughs> yeah. No, Lyndon. Linda, what brings you by, yeah? Uh, I noticed that your uh, your grass is kind of high. Uh, my ass is what now? Your grass is kind of high. Oh, my grass, yeah. Yeah, it is, yeah. And uh, I, have a, I, I have a lawn mowing service that I would like to offer you if you want. I can cut your grass for, uh, for uh, $20. Well, do you have your own mower? Because I have one with the, the electrical cord, yeah. But I haven't had it turned on in a while. I have Not a, the only I, thing I haven't had turned on in a while for putting it on all out there. <laughs> what? Yeah. what? I, I have uh, I, I have my own. I have the push one. The le- not electric, not gas, but the push one with the sh- the, the twist. Oh, the, the kind that father always used, yeah. Yeah, like the, the uh, that, yeah, it's olden times kind. So, I pay ten cents an hour. Um, what? Ha, I pay ten cents an hour. What? Uh, what's the I, going rate? What did you? Um, I said twenty dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, that sounds great. Yeah, ten cents an hour. And well, what did you pay Charlie across the street? He he gave me twenty dollars. Yeah, ten cents. Perfect. So if you get it done in two hours, it's uh, fifteen cents. Yeah, because the first hour is ten cents. Second hour is half price for the senior citizens. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to say I gotta go home, Miss, Mrs. Bonnie. You must be doing this for a Girl Guide badge, are you? Yeah, community I'm outreach. A, yeah, I'm a boy, but I'll see you later, Bonnie. Hey, look up, look up there. Do you see that's my friend Jose? He's a Blue Jay. Yeah, yeah. he's he ho- says he says Josh Donaldson's ah, back. Yeah, why is he flying at me? <laughs> 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 Well, he probably sees you trying to rip off a senior citizen, yeah. Ah. He says, we're better off now, he says, than we were in April. He says, Blue Jays are looking good, he says. Give me a tax, poor Lyndon. Poor Linda. <laughs> Linda was a boy named Linda, and you. I haven't been to see that um, uh, Blue Jay in a couple of weeks. I'm due. Oh, yeah. What do you think's going on? I don't know. I think he's still there. I'm sure I would have heard otherwise. Do you think? Yeah. Like it's not no, no issues. No, I'm sure it's fine. 
It's just the way it is, bud. That's it. What do you want to do? You want to take a break or you want to play one more, get a job? Let's play one more, get a job. Okay. <coughs> Let me cue her up. Okay. okay. My name is Kelvin. Kelvin? K-E-L-V-I-N. And I'm coming to get a job at your hardware store. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And you're, um, you're Mr. Campbell. I'm Mr. Campbell? Yep. And... Sorry, I was queuing this up. What's the re- what's the place again? It's a hardware store. Hardware. Okay. My name's Kelvin. And you're trying to become a cashier or something? Yeah, because I want to work at the hardware store. All right, cool. It's time to play. Get a job. That was your best one yet. <clears throat> um, are you Mr. Campbell? Yeah, that's me. Hi, Mr. Campbell. Uh, my name's Kelvin. <coughs> um, I sent in a resume, and uh, I was just following up to see if that... Um, Position is still available for stock boy, etc. Yep. 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 It, it's real. You got it? You want it? I'm sorry? You want it? What? Was was this the interview process? Because, uh, yeah? Hold this hammer. Hold this hammer. That's not a hammer. And there's a nail. <coughs> show me how you, Show me how you do it. Are you okay? You're um, kind of red in the face. Hit the hammer, do it. Hit. You want oh, a job? Okay. You gotta hit yep. the hammer. Okay. <laughs> there Good you go. Job. This is five twenty-five an hour. But mi- sorry, minimum you wage to, is um uh, that, twelve bucks. Five twenty-five an hour, and you have to take your shirt off. Mr. Campbell, you ca- you're not legally. No, no offense. You're not legally allowed to pay people less than minimum wage. Okay, I'll pay ten ten dollars, but you have to take your shirt off. Twelve twenty-five. Shirt stays on after lunch. This isn't the deal. Take your shirt off, Mr. Campbell. Th- I'll take my shirt off then. There you go. Well, with all, <laughs> I mean, it's impressive the shape what do you think? you're in for your age. What do you think, babe? Babe. Yeah. Give me the works. Oh my gosh. This is this is a hard store. Give me the works, kid. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Give me the works. Okay. Mr. Campbell's disgusting. That was fun to play, get a job. Do you have a queued up one last time? Oh shit on the one more time for old times. That was fun to play. Hold on, no, I can, one more time. Okay. That was wait, fun wait. to play. Okay, okay, okay. That was fun to play. That was fun to play. <laughs> that was fun to play. <laughs> Just for fun, he says. <laughs> oh my gosh. We'll take a break on TNT 111. Be right back, Bob. Let me ask you this right quick, you know what I mean? Mr. Bachman, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me today. No problem. Uh, As you know, readers of Rolling Stone magazine are putting together a list of, like, all-time most important people in rock, and, uh, uh, you know, surprisingly, you're on it. Oh, makes sense to me. Uh, uh, um, uh, You know, a lot of people up there, and most most, uh, good, good friends of mine. Oh, so you know most of the people on the list without even having seen the list. I'm probably. Well, I mean, uh, uh, throughout history, of the people that I've met, uh, I, I think I've, I've. I'm very familiar with most. I mean, from from Hendrix to to Jim Morrison to, you know, uh, I've got. Uh, we're we're all close. Really? So you met Jim Morrison? Let's start there. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, I remember I was down there and uh, we were out, and I said. Uh, we were having a couple of beers at the Rainbow, and I said to, and I said to Jim, I said, "Hey Jim, uh, there's nothing I like better than a, than an LA woman." And then he's just, you know, he decided to run with that. And uh, I'm sorry, they did the LA woman that night. I'm pretty sure they went back to Sunset and uh, tracked that. I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I forgive they me. Actually, it's gonna be a lot of stuff and start because it, I, my editor's gonna, gonna ask me very specifically. Um, so you're. You're suggesting that that L.A. woman is something that you gave him the idea for, just to be clear? Well, you know, I, I mean, I, I'd, 
I said it, you know, I said it and then I heard it. And uh, I mean, they asked me to play on the track, but uh, I just didn't want to step on Krieger's toes at the time. You know, they were having a bit of a conflict because <laughs> Jim was getting a little messed up. Yeah. So uh, what what about um, Jimi Hendrix? What was your experience with him, Randy? Uh, Jimi Hendrix, uh, it's interesting because uh, you, uh, you remember the girl who did the plaster casts of, uh, of the penis, penises? Um, it, it's a bit before my time, um, but I, I anyway, can certainly look uh, it up. It, apparently, they say the the most famous uh, of her plaster casts and uh, the biggest was Jimi Hendrix, where uh, she's actually wrong because I was in the room that night and uh, we were both getting plaster cast, and uh, I, I uh, when I left, Jimmy's fell on the ground. And cracked, and uh, mine was just there, and I think she thought uh, that, that for some reason that, that his was, was mine. So, um, anyway, me and Sorry. Jimmy had a lot of good times together. Yeah, he, he, again, he uh, asked me to join the experience, but I, fa- I figured it'd be better as a trio. I Forgive me, I have so- several questions. Um, I'm just trying to take notes here as, as you're speaking. There's a lot of information. So... Are, did you say something about a Stratocaster, or, or that was a, a, a plaster? Yeah, it was a, a mold of a penis. And, and so the mold commonly believed to be that of Jimi Hendrix is, in fact, yes, you? Yes, it's me. Yeah. Okay. But uh, anyway, I, 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 this is an, it's an interview about me, isn't it? Yes, yeah, so let's let's get to uh, let's get to the subject of you. Tell us a little bit about how uh, the Guess Who came together in the early days. Who who was responsible for getting the band together, etc. Well, I was a, a kid uh, in Winnipeg at the time, and uh, Chuck Berry was playing in town, and uh, he was having dinner at a diner by himself afterwards. And everybody knows that Chuck Berry, when he was on the road, he never tours with a band. He always just has pickup local musicians <clears throat> I was very young at the time I think I was about eight but okay but uh, he's he uh, he gave me his guitar that he happened to have at the diner and uh, I showed him a few licks and he said well I'd like to have you play instead of me tonight he asked me to play and uh, he said he would just sing and uh, I would do the song I just said I couldn't stay up that late. my, my parents are very strict you see so you had the opportunity to play instead of Chuck Berry at a Chuck Berry show. Yeah, this was in uh, this was in nineteen sixty one, and you were eight, something like that. Yeah. Was there anyone else in the I diner who could? Uh, again, my editor's going to or... want me to back this stuff up. Was there anyone else on the planet Earth that could verify that that happened? Ah, uh, well, I mean, unless you know anybody that worked at the uh, the. Uh, the the Portage Street Diner in uh, 1958. To uh, you, you, good luck finding. Uh, so the Portage Street Diner. So just because I'll look it up in the city records. Portage Street Diner uh, was whereabouts on Portage? <clears throat> it's not far from uh, Portage in in Maine. Okay. Uh, the street actually was named after my uh, my grandfather because he used to walk so much distance on the weekends that he actually they called him portage pete and they named the street after him portage it used to actually be portage pete but they changed it back to portage so if i look up your family records again because I'll, I'll just have to verify and back up all these facts your grandfather's name is peter great grandfather yeah you might have to, it depends on how far, how far you go back but he's there and his that was his birth that's his legal name Peter or or did people yep. just call him Pete and that's how Yeah. Yeah, he actually um you know how there's 12 chords in music. Yeah. He actually created uh, his grandfather created the 11th and 9th chord. <laughs> wow. That's quite the heritage. Yeah, yeah it's uh it's just a lot of stories but again uh well, I guess that's kind of about me. It's my lineage. Yeah, so um, why don't you tell us about some of the more memorable encounters you had with, um, you know, celebrities and, and uh, rock and roll figures? Well, that depends. I I mean, uh, there was a time Elvis and I were... Uh, Elvis came backstage and, and uh, 
I think it was at the Fillmore in 69, and guess who was playing a set with Taj Mahal? And again, I, I, Taj Mahal wanted me to fill in. I couldn't do it. I, I just wanted, I was really tired from the tour. And uh, Elvis came, and uh, Elvis was, uh, he, he said to me, he said, hey, thanks for the, thanks for the hip thing. Elvis uh, Stoiko? Uh, no, Elvis Presley. Wow, okay. Yeah. He said he was, uh, he was a big fan of, uh, of a local, uh, uh, for some reason, our, our high school, he, he had video of our high school talent show, and he saw me dancing when I was seven. So you're this I'm black sorry. and white film, and he you were in high school when you were seven because he had a thing for local Winnipeg lore. And, Elvis uh, Presley, yeah, did. he saw me, uh, he saw me dancing, and uh, he took my moves. The Elvis, you know, the hip thing. So the, oh, that was you too. Wow. Um, I was you very were young. quoted I wasn't, as saying, I, mean, I didn't know. I didn't even know I was dancing at the time. You were, you were just, you were just doing you. You are quoted in Spin Magazine in an article from the 1980s as saying, when you turned down the offer to join the Beatles, you said, you know who you guys should get is George Harrison, because he'd be okay. If you can't get me, get George. Yeah, well, Is that true? Is that exactly how it happened? It's not exactly how it happened. Okay. It was actually uh, Paul uh, came to me and I said, it wasn't George. I said, John, this John Lennon kid. Yeah. I said, this John Lennon kid that uh, looks like he's probably got his eye on the ball musically. And uh, it's also... It was Jimmy Page when uh, the Yardbirds, the Yardbirds, you know, a super group having Jeff Beck with them and obviously Jimmy Page playing guitar. Uh, they had a the, the big, the, they all were such great guitar players. And when Jimmy Page left, he decided he wanted to start his own group and he asked me to be in the group. And that group was going to be Led Zeppelin. And uh, at the time, it was the, t- the time that Keith Moon was in the room playing drums, I believe. And, uh, and he said that thing, but it was actually me who said, I don't really want to do this. This is going to go down like a Led Zeppelin when I left the room. Oh, okay. So and, uh, a joke, so, right. I mean, I, I gave them the name uh, inadvertently, but uh, I, I, uh, I wish I would have played with them. But again, they were much better as a trio musically. Burton Cummings is quoted as saying, you have to take everything Bachman says with a grain of salt. <laughs> well, what I mean, everybody kind of knows that? about Burton. He, uh, you, you, you can't really... He likes, to tell, uh, he likes to tell a tall tale from time to time between you and I. Burton does. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I got a bit tired of his act in the, in the, like I, in the, the 70, 70, probably 1970. I believe that's whatever. Right around when I left at the Fillmore was because of his. Uh, he told me a story that I just couldn't handle. That the uh, it was just too far fetched. Something oh. about uh, uh, the the Queen approaching him and wanting him to become some kind of Canadian prince. Right. I'm going to give a, uh, give you a few quotes of things you said in magazine articles, and uh, maybe you could just elaborate a little bit. Of Freddie Mercury, you said the house guest that wouldn't leave. What did you mean by that? Well, I mean, he's a he's a fun guy. He's very intelligent. Uh, it's just uh, he's very demanding. A bit of a diva when it comes to food. Uh, just complained, didn't like uh, what I served him. And uh, but again, we had, we had some uh, really good sit downs. We did a lot of a cappella song singing. Uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you remember uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, that I do, song. Yeah. I mean, that was from my basement when we were just humming along. Uh, so I think, wait, uh, wait, this is important uh, rock and roll uh, music whole lore. started with the whole Scaramouche thing. I was just Scaramouching kind of, that's what I used to do to... Uh, to get ready to go to sleep at night, I'd say, Scaramouche, Scaramouche, if you a find angle. So you... And he well, he just jumped on that. I, mean, I tell you, he's, I gotta admit, he's such a strong vocalist, almost as uh, strong as I am, but uh, incredible. So you wrote that part of Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah, I mean, at the time, they were just, they needed a little bit of a push. And uh, I was okay with, with him taking it. 
<laughs> wow. I um I have to say I I studied uh, rock and roll history. It's obviously I am a student of the craft and passionate about it. I I had no idea um, that you yeah. were so involved and had so many tentacles in so many formative rock and roll moments. Well, it's not just rock and roll. I mean, there's all kinds of things that have happened to me personally that have affected the world. Uh, go on. Well, I mean, I'm not, when Nelson Mandela was staying at my house. Uh, for a period of time in the 60s. Nelson Mandela um, was staying in your house? Uh, Salman Rushdie hell, uh, hid out um, for a majority of his time at my at my place. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I, I was... Uh, my, my, uh, I, I, I'm in a, a, a soccer league that uh, with Paul Allen. Okay. Um, I think you've certainly given me enough to get started on would it be okay with you if i called you back if i had any more questions like upon that, my research uh, if i discovered that much fine, of what you said I isn't true to, actually uh, M- uh you you know malala she, she's coming to speak at my uh, uh school nearby so she's staying here for the evening malala is staying at your house yeah she's a very uh, encouraging encouraging girl and i'm i'm just I'm really glad that she's used a lot of what I've told her to to kind of give positivity. To so, the world. You, so you, to be clear, you're suggesting that you um, gave Malala subject matter for her speeches. Well, I mean, not just not that. I would say more, and in, um, in her recovery and making her confident enough to get back to things and stuff like that. Did you influence the U.S. election? Uh, you know, uh, the, the, in terms of bigger fish to fry, there is. Uh, I I don't really get into stuff like that. I don't really want to talk to to that. I mean, every time Putin calls, I I try. I get a little bit nervous. You know, Vladimir. What I, mean? I just get a little bit nervous. What? Vladimir Putin calls your house. Yeah, from time to time, and it's uh, I just it's just a little bit concerning. Uh, I don't know what he knows. He's a huge what he wants to know. He's a huge Guess Who fan. I know that. I mean, uh, he he got me to uh, he sent me a, a, a multi platinum version of New Mother Nature that he actually recorded himself and put it out in in Russia. You are quoted as saying, and I, I will leave it here. Um, your biggest regret is breaking the hearts of Raquel Welch, Sybil Shepard, and Angela Lansbury. Yeah. Is is there truth to, to each of those? Well, statements? sure. I mean, uh, uh, um, I'm a bit of a romantic. I mean, uh, I continue. I don't know. I, I just don't know what it is. I just, I love women. Uh, I had an issue. I, I, I I couldn't. Uh, I was with J Lo for a couple of months back in uh, 2008. I just thought it was. I'm that, sorry, that Jennifer kind of Lopez. Life, that kind of that kind of lifestyle is just too fast for me. So you were. I, I just really want to nail this down. You dated the singer and actor Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, yep. Yeah, we were we were a thing for a bit. I don't know why the tabloids don't seem to. Uh, I guess maybe she thought that I wasn't her her. Uh, her maid at the time, but uh, yeah, we had a thing. It was uh, quick, but uh, I just do. I like I said, uh, too much shopping for me. You know, I I don't really like shop. It's a shame that the world never got to know Randifer. I know. It's uh, we did. Uh, you know, uh, probably the only girl or a guy she ever dated and had a bigger butt than her let's just say that oh self-deprecating yeah. right yeah huh um mr bachman thank you so much for your time i will be in touch if i have any questions after i verify um each and every one of these facts uh we have to have three sources at our magazine in order to include a fact in an article so if i have any trouble verifying everything that you said i will definitely be in touch fantastic thanks for your time Thank you for your time. He's so likable. <laughs> How can someone be so likable and so 
uh, Lucy Goosey with the truth. Oh, I know, eh? He loves, but the guy, that's a good game. They're fun, a fun thing there, the Randy's Tall Tales. I also, just as uh, an overlay, I love the idea of the Rolling Stone interviews. Yeah. Because you could interview me as Donovan. I can interview yep. you as Randy Bachman. Sure. It's great. Love that. You could interview me as Alan Frew. I could yep. interview you as Brad Roberts. Yeah. Like the can... Lost Rolling Stone tapes is amazing. <laughs> we could find out what's up with Peter Garrett. Hey, Bods, let us know who you want to hear interviewed in the Rolling <laughs> Stone interviews. The Lost Rolling Stone tapes. <laughs> Um, hey, we have some breaking news to end the show today. Yeah. Um, sorry is... for talking about the book a whole lot, guys, but we're pretty fired up about it. And our pretty publisher, HarperCollins yes. Canada, has um, given us the go-ahead to release the cover. So Ooh. we're going to release the cover. The book still comes out on October 17th, but yes. we have been given permission to release the cover. The has cover. kind of a Campfire Notebooks vibe, eh, bud? It's got a great vibe. Uh, it's us. It's, it's not... Uh... It's something that I could see happening, the cover. Me too. You know what I mean? And the vibe makes you want to be there. It's kind that of a campfire notebook great. vibe and yes. um, music vibe and Canadianity vibe. It feels uh, it feels really us. It definitely does. And it ties in again uh, the stories and the way that the book feels and the, 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 I guess the overall vibe is perfect with the picture. Yep. And we're going to release that on the, the Twitter the, and all the social media platforms when this al- episode drops. In advance of the announcement of our tour dates, which is going to take us from, well, the very West Coast, right? We're going to Vancouver yep. for the first time ever. Um, we're going to do like a book event one night and then a live show the next night in most major cities across the country. Yep, and, and then, then uh, God be... willing, we'll double back and do some of the smaller markets. But Vancouver, we are coming to you in early November, and Montreal, we are coming to you in late October. Oh yes, two new places that we haven't been yet, and we're getting back to see a lot of the same familiar faces and places uh, in the other dates in our tour announcement, which is coming up soon, Bod. Yes, Bod, and that uh, that wraps this one up pretty nicely. Yeah, wraps it up like a fajita. Yeah. Thanks, Jose. Yeah, take care, little birds. We'll see you next week. Yeah.